Let's pray before we begin. Lord, please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Real quick, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you. Chapter 52 Zedekiah was one and twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah, till he had cast them out from his presence, that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon came, he and all his army, against Jerusalem, and pitched against it, and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. And in the fourth month, in the ninth day of the month, the famine was sore in the city, so that there was no bread for the people of the land. Then the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled and went forth out of the city by night, by the way of the gate between the two walls, which was by the king's garden. Now the Chaldeans were by the city round about. And they went by the way of the plain. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued after the king, and overtook Zedekiah in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they took the king and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Riblah in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also all the princes of Judah in Riblah. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon, and put him in prison till the day of his death. Now in the fifth month, in the tenth day of the month, which was the nineteenth year of Nebuchadrezzar king of Babylon, came Nebuzar Adon, captain of the guard which served the king of Babylon, into Jerusalem, and burned the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all the houses of Jerusalem and all the houses of the great men burned he with fire. And all the army of the Chaldeans that were with the captain of the guard brake down all the walls of Jerusalem round about. Then Nebuzarad and the captain of the guard carried away captive certain of the poor of the people and the residue of the people that remained in the city and those that fell away that fell to the king of Babylon and the rest of the multitude. But Nebuzarad and the captain of the guard left certain of the poor of the land for vine dressers and for husbandmen. Also the pillars of brass that were in the house of the Lord and the bases and the brazen sea that was in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans break and carried all the brass of them to Babylon. The cauldrons also, and the shovels, and the snuffers, and the bowls, and the spoons, and all the vessels of brass wherewith they ministered, took they away. And the basins, and the firepans, and the bowls, and the cauldrons, and the candlesticks, and the spoons, and the cups, that which was of gold in gold, and that which was of silver in silver, took the captain of the guard away. The two pillars, one sea, and twelve brazen bulls that were under the bases which King Solomon had made in the house of the Lord, the brass of all these vessels was without weight. And concerning the pillars, the height of one pillar was eighteen cubits, and a fillet of twelve cubits did compass it, and the thickness thereof was four fingers, it was hollow. And a chapiter of brass was upon it, and the height of one chapiter was five cubits, with network and pomegranates upon the chapiters round about, all of brass. The second pillar also and the pomegranates were like unto these. And there were ninety and six pomegranates on a side, and all the pomegranates upon the network were an hundred round about. And the captain of the god took Sariah the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the door. He took also out of the city an eunuch, which had the charge of the men of war, and seven men of them that were near the king's person which were found in the city, and the principal scribe of the host who mustered the people of the land, and threescore men of the people of the land that were found in the midst of the city. So Nebuzarad and the captain of the guard took them and brought them to the king of Babylon to Riblah. And the king of Babylon smote them and put them to death in Riblah in the land of Hamath. Thus Judah was carried away captive out of his own land. This is the people whom Nebuchadrezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, three thousand Jews and three and twenty. In the eighteenth year of Nebuchadrezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem eight hundred thirty and two persons. In the three and twentieth year of Nebuchadrezzar, 
Nebuzar Adam, the captain of the guard, carried away captive of the Jews seven hundred forty and five persons. All the persons were four thousand and six hundred. And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, in the five and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison, and spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments, and he did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. And for his diet there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon, every day a portion, until the day of his death, all the days of his life. Matthew Henry Commentary on Jeremiah chapter 52, verses 1 to 11. This fruit of sin we should pray against above anything. Cast me not away from thy presence. Psalms 51, verse 11. None are cast out of God's presence, but those who by sin have first thrown themselves out. Zedekiah's flight was in vain, for there is no escaping the judgments of God. They come upon the sinner and overtake him. Let him flee where he will. Verses 12 to 23. The Chaldean army made woeful havoc, but nothing is so particularly related here as the carrying away of the articles in the temple. The remembrance of their beauty and value shows us the more the evil of sin. Verses 24 to 30. The leaders of the Jews caused them to err, but now they are in particular made monuments of divine justice. Here is an account of two earlier captivities. This people often were wonders both of judgment and mercy, verses 31 to 34. Second Kings 25, verses 27 to 30. Those under oppression will find it is not in vain for them to hope and quietly to wait for the salvation of the Lord. Our times are in God's hand, for the hearts of all we have to deal with are so. May we be enabled more and more to rest on the rock of ages and to look forward with holy faith to that hour when the Lord will bring again Zion and overthrow all the enemies of the church. Please consider, how does this chapter apply to you? Thank you for listening. If you want to know more about Jesus and what the gospel means to you, then hit the video shown on the left of the screen and please don't forget to subscribe. May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your day.